might begin to focus on this battle for second. Doug Gust and Chad Weenan, both yellow machines. Gust is the leader of this. He is currently second behind that man, John Natale. And there he is, that battle. Now, Doug Gust, the 55, in front of Chad Weenan on the 44. Gust is our champion from last year. And Chad Weenan is a newcomer to the Suzuki Yoshimura team. Now, Weenan has changed his body so much in the past year. He's really been training and working out. He's leaned down, and he has become a great challenge, and I think uh, maybe some great inspiration for the veteran Doug Gus. Boy, and look at Weenan. He goes right, he goes left, he looks for any opportunity. Doug Gus maintains second place. Weenan continues to push him. It's great to see the strength of this Suzuki team because not only are these two gentlemen on the team, but of course Dustin Wimmer, the second place guy in our championship last year. That's a powerhouse team, but the Hondas, they've really been doing well. John Natale shows how consistent he is all season long. Keith Little, I think Quad Magazine, who sponsored that whole shot, probably should just write all the checks for the whole season out and put Keith Little's name on it because he's been so dominating off the line and being throughout these races. And you know, this is so frustrating for uh, television because John Natale has given number 13 a really great ride, but he is just out of frame. We look at the battle for second, you get a glimpse of Natale from time to time while we try to keep track of this uh, Doug Goss, Chad Weenan battle, and let me tell you, look at it, it's perfect. Well, you've got to wonder if Doug Goss isn't trying to shut the door every now and again on Weenan, which would slow him down and allow Natale to actually pull away from the front so there's a danger here in racing the guy behind you is that the guy in front of you is actually going to check out when you're in the lead of a two three four group there what what you're trying to do is take the line away from the guy behind you but if you keep doing that then the line you're taking just simply isn't the fastest around and whoever's in front of you tends to go away how about this view on board looking back from john natale the battle for second well kind of convenient that natale had the camera that could actually watch this competition going on between Gust and Weenan. You know, Weenan keeps looking for that door, but it ain't opening. Doug Gust knows how to ride a good defensive race. But you know, there's uh, one place especially where Weenan keeps moving down to the inside, and I just wonder if he's just telegraphing and telegraphing, and as we've seen so many times before, looking for that opportunity. So one time he does it, Gus moves to the inside to block him, and then all of a sudden he's ringing around on the outside. Well, we know the number is fast. It comes out of the same rig as Doug Gus, number 55. But let's not forget, the third member of the team, Dustin Wimmer, he's lurking there just a little bit behind these guys. Well, maybe he's waiting for a, a little mistake from the two of them as they battle, and he'll storm on through. And what does grabbing the whole shot do for you if you can't carry that much further on? Well, right now, Keith Little is back in eighth place. Yeah, Keith Little got passed by Rocco Arno for seventh, so Little is fading in the field, but, you know, he does have a little extra padding in his pocket with that money from Quad Magazine, so I'm sure dropping back doesn't sting too bad, Paul. We keep looking. The battle for second place. This is so good. And, you know, Tess, I, I think that they're closing in. There is another one of those opportunities where Weenan takes a tighter line into the corner, and Gus knows he's there. Gus comes over to the right, but I'm wondering if that's not the setup. Well, the big surprise is Juice a little, and they're starting to chase down on John Natale, so they're not losing ground. Weenan is still looking for the way through past Gus. This is actually a great race, and look at the fourth guy over there. That's Dustin Wimmer, their teammate. Yeah, Wimmer is now very much a part of this fight. It is a three-way fight for second place, and John Natale is not that far ahead, so the question you must answer with regard to Natale is, is it because he's resting and he's got a comfortable pad and doesn't really need to shoot out there, or is he really in trouble? Well, this is like the hare and the hounds, and if you're the hare, you don't rest when you're at the front of the pack. He looks back, he sees three yellow Suzuki's chasing him down. John Natale is going to go as fast as he possibly can. So if that's true, we are watching what is now a terrific fight first through fourth. Natalie, Gus, Weenan, Wimmer. 
at between fourth and fifth between Wimmer and Josh Kramer aboard that green Kawasaki machine has extended quite a bit. That was kind of crazy. That looked like either Gust or Wien and took out a little part of the inside of the track. That yeah, was a post of some kind. It just went flipping back away from the machine. Look at how this is closing up. This time, by the way, Wien decides to stay right behind Doug Gust. And I, I think because he's been doing that through most of the course, that's part of the reason that they're catching up to Natalie. Well, it, it's amazing how close they've gotten to John. I, honestly, I thought that that red machine was going to start checking out because of this battle, but that's not so. And maybe because Wienan is being patient in his fight with Doug Gust, it's allowing Gust to really charge after the number 13 Honda. And look how close they are. Yeah, you could throw a blanket over the front three, maybe even the front four right now. And look at this. Doug Gust is now right on the tail of John Natale. Wow, this is a great battle. Honda and Suzuki. Suzuki have been so dominant all year long, and they certainly have a powerhouse team. But John Natale aboard that red machine is just bending him off on every turn. And you know what? If I'm uh, right now Doug Gust, I'm thinking, I can get this guy. And if I'm Chad Wheaton, leaning, I'm thinking, you know, he can get that guy. But when he does, I'm going to be set up and get both of them. Well, Wienan keeps getting closer to Gust, but Gust also is no slacker. He's getting closer to Natale. What a marvelous fight we're seeing here in the Pro 450s from London in Kentucky. Not in England, in Kentucky. Wow. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The neck and neck going over the big double. Oh, look at that. Wienan takes a look over at Gust as if to say, this spot is mine. Man, I'm just about to say this is going to go on and on. No, it is not. As we have a change for second, Super Quad Pro 450 continues. Oh, you have to love the ATVs. Take a look at this. That is John Natale out in front. Chad Whedon in second place. He closed down on Doug Gus, got around him, and now has second and has given Natale fits. At the same time, there's Natale's mechanic saying, get going, Kimberly. Steve, you're going to get it for John Natale. And I see that uh, you're out there cheering him on. He's in first, and he was our top qualifier today. Is he pretty comfortable? He's pretty comfortable, Johnson. He's in good shape. He's still riding on a bum knee, and we got all yellow behind us, so he's got to have his work put up for him. Now, I know that you put on that board right there, and it said, is that mentally tough or just because he had physical injuries? That's both mentally and physically. John is going to have to really be strong to try to hold these guys off. These kids are young and in real good shape. We are watching some great racing at the front, and in fact, the first four. Natalie, Chad Wienan, and Doug Gus sits back in third after being passed by Chad Wienan. And boy, I would not want to be John Natalie right now. He has got to defend that position, not just from Chad Wienan, but also from everybody sitting back there, Wimmer and the rest of the group, because just the slightest bobble as we look back from wow. John Natalie. Look at that! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the same place that Wienan got Doug Gust. He tries to get past Natalie by making that inside move, and Natalie just manages to turn on the juice on that Honda and pull away from him. But look how close all of these guys are. That's where it seems Natale can pick up a little advantage as he runs to the finish line mound. He seems like he's got a better exit from the previous corner, a little more power, and, and pulls away, but then almost immediately, Wainan and for that matter, Gust are right back on him. Oh, what's phenomenal is how close Wimmer is starting to get to Gust right now, so as D. Manchek said, John's mechanic, he looks back and he sees all yellow because it really is a Suzuki wave right behind John Natalia, and Natalia keeps holding him off lap after lap. And nothing here is certain. First through fourth right now. Natalia, Wienan, Gus, Wimmer, they're all right there. You know, they passed ITP turn one there, and it was a perfect interval between every rider, which means every one of these four has an opportunity now to get to the front of the field and take that checkered flag. And, you know, I'm not a bet man, but if I was, I don't think I'd be laying bets on this race. Wayne and tries Natalie wow. coming up the hill. Natalie.
Natale cuts him off. Wheaton goes to the inside on Natale. But the next turn is going to sweep to the right. Natale will have it. Wheaton tries to round it Whoa. high. And does he get it? Look at that move. He tried him on the inside. He took him there yesterday, and then he faked him. This time, he gets him on the outside, and Chad Wheaton goes to the front. Oh, there's that whole psych game that we're talking about. To show him where you can do it and where you can't. Chad Wheaton now has the lead over John Natale. Oh, that was an amazing move by Wien, and Vitaly's expecting him on the inside, and all of a sudden, look at this guy, he rockets around the outside. Boy, he had that thing set up and timed perfectly, and when he came ringing around the outside, he was carrying plenty of speed with him. John Vitaly kind of bogged it down a little bit by taking the tight line, hoping to block him, and that was costly for John Natale. And now, you know what? Uh, he has his hands full because he has both Gus and Wimmer battling for third and trying to also get second away from Natale. Well, that was the same corner that last week John Natale got passed on by Chad Wienan. Wienan's actually been really successful on that corner all weekend long. And it's now going to be a challenge for Natale because Wimmer is really, really fighting hard with Gus, and those two are charging behind the number 13. The two in the heat of summer. These races are physically brutal to whoever is trying to ride these Pro 450s. And as the race goes on, especially on a course like this with plenty of ups and downs, it begins to really wear you down. You can bet that the front four are all getting to the point of exhaustion right now. Well, they've got to be tired, and it's one of those things where you don't really understand how hard it is to manhandle these machines around this track. You can see how much movement the rider has on top of the ATV. You're, you're moving back and forth because four wheels are not easy to keep on the ground. And you go too far over, you're going on your side. WPSA puts on a great show, and this is another one. Three-way battle for second place. Natale, Gus, and Dustin Wimmer. Wimmer gives uh, Gus a little boot there. And come on, let's go. Get around that guy. Well, the question is, John now riding defensively because Wienan seems to be pulling away. And just to go back to that pass for one second, it was an incredibly brave move because Chad Wienan went way to the outside. You can see how loose it is on the outside of some of these turns. So the risk was there, but boy, did it pay off for Chad Wienan. All about risk and reward. He took the risk and got first place as the reward. Now look at these guys. They're hounding the tally. Oh, look at that move. Justin Wimmer was hauling to the inside there, trying to get past Gus. And he cuts hard to the right. It doesn't work there either. It's still Justin Wimmer fighting for third. Natalie second, just ahead of him on 13. And again, they think this goes side by side. They work one another. Dustin Wimmer is looking for any opportunity to get past Doug Gus. He's really fighting for it. Gus still holds on. Oh. He gets together with Natale. And Wimmer goes past on the inside. Now Natale comes back and slams Gus. White flag. One to go. Oh, wow. That was the opportunity that Wimmer needed, but I didn't think it was going to happen like that. And Gus was just going so fast on the inside there. I really don't know how he thought he was actually going to make that no, corner. He, he wasn't going to get around that corner at all. The only reason he's still on the track is because Natalie stopped him. But, boy, Wimmer took advantage of that as he should and moved right into second. Wow, that was disastrous for John Natale. And he really had that line. And unfortunately, Doug Gus just took it away from him and allowed Dustin Wimmer to go through, and Doug Gus kind of helped himself to be some kid, too. Chad Wienan on the final lap. You have to look back a little bit if you want to pick up Wimmer, because Chad Wienan, once he got around to tally, began steadily pulling away. There you get just a glimpse of second place, second, third. And John Natale, who's faded way back now. You know what? I don't think first place is all that safe. Well, the amazing thing is Justin Wimmer and his lap times right now are absolutely phenomenal. So he is really charging at the tail end of this race. Unfortunately, I think he left it just a little too late, but 
Wow, one more lap, and who knows what the story might be. Well, the story is not completely over yet. Can Wimmer catch him at all? No, he cannot. But they were both right together as the checkered flag came out. Weenan takes the win. And they both look exhausted as they came to the flag. Well, for another week, Keith Middle gets the whole shot aboard that Honda and then fades back in the field. And then it's John Natale in the fight, and he just gets fooled by Chad Ween and taken on the outside. Doug Gus then got into Natale, and that gave Wimmer the opportunity to come around, and in doing so, it gave him a second-place finish. We'll talk to Chad Weenan when we come back. Well, it was Weenan that took the win here in round two from London, Kentucky, and that gets him an interview with Kimberly. Chad, I'm having a little bit of deja vu here. Yesterday, at around this time, you were trying to get around Natali, and you end up victorious, taking the win, and here you are again today. Clean sweep for the weekend. Yeah, it went great. Um, you know, the guys, they put this, uh, put this weekend together for uh, Team Suzuki, and, uh, you know, we couldn't ask for a better team and um, yesterday was uh, you know I had a bad race uh, a couple weeks ago and um, you know you just gotta put your head down and uh, make it happen and um, you know we worked hard this week went to Jeremiah's place and um, you know teach us some tricks and what well, you know we're up here in first again absolutely yes you are now why don't you tell me a little bit about the competition that you had with Natalie back and forth back and forth oh yeah um, definitely um, We've been uh, exchanging rubber all weekend, and um, you know it's just been it's been a tough weekend for me. Uh, I get we got good starts, and uh, you know they edge us out, but um, you know the endurance comes into play in these longer races, and um, we uh, just put it together. Well, in test here is the Super Quad Pro 450 MX. The order of finish, it's official now. It's Weenan, Wimmer, and Gus. John Natale, the early and long leader, finishes in fourth. 